I keep, I keep, I look in the like the the camera, the webcam, and I look more and more pale, and more and more like baggy, and I keep thinking there's something wrong with the camera, but it's just that I'm, you know, don't get any sun, and I'm disgusting. So you know, technically I'm fine. Hey guys, Funny Guy Timmy here for another voiceover video. This one I want to talk about audiobooks. Now, I've covered this topic loosely. Uh, I think, I don't think I've done a video on just this topic. So I want to do a video on just this topic. Now, I keep bringing up audiobooks when I do a lot of microphone reviews. Um, it's part of my kind of more or less loosey-goosey scaling system. Uh, Wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey um, scaling system. Um, when I say, you know, what this microphone might be good for, and the categories are um, Skyping, Let's Plays, um, Podcast, um, Audiobook, um, Radio, Commercial, Character, I think that's how I have it categorized, something like that. We have some of them switched around, but Audiobook um, is something that I often suggest that people might want to try when they're first starting out, um, it, it, you know, if they have, a, you know, do have a day job, uh, and they don't need the audiobook money to survive, but at the same time, it's not something that I truly recommend. I have done audiobook work. I think there's two audiobooks that I've done in total, um, and. I think collectively I've made 50 bucks off the entire three years those books have been out. Uh, so, eh, I don't... It's not like something that I truly recommend, but a lot of that is because it's not something that I personally enjoy. And from listening over, it sounds a lot like I wasn't having fun. And I was just boring to listen to. So that could be why... It didn't work out for me. But for other people who don't have dyslexia or don't have trouble reading long-form um, projects um, might enjoy it. Um, you know, it, you know, if you actually enjoy picking up a book and reading it, and then all you have to do is turn the mic on and say it out loud and put some flair and some panache behind it. Panache, sorry, word. Um, then you could make some money doing that. I know a couple people that can read an entire 600-page book in, like, a weekend. And that blows my mind. I would never be able to do that. So, I don't think it's fair for me to base the entire voiceover um, audiobook section of the industry off my personal experience. Um, so, what, what you can do is uh, there's ACX, AXC, or something like that. Uh, I'll have a link to it down below. Um, is Amazon Affiliate, Amazon Associated site, where for free, now this is why I recommend it to people that are starting out. For free, you can go and, you know, set up a profile, put up your, your demos or whatever, and there will be books that will, you know, uh, publishers... You're not working through a, an agency. You're not working through an agent, which is a good and a bad thing, and I'll explain in a second. Um, and you can, you know, uh, you're basically just talking to the person who wrote the book, um, you know, and you're negotiating with them. And there's two ways that you can, um, you know, uh, negotiate pay. Uh, a lot of this is, of course, after um, you've already landed that audition. They'll, they'll put up their book, um, a synopsis of it, say how many words, the style, and they'll have like a section of the book that they want you to read and audition for. It's pretty typical for auditioning. And um, and then you'll send in your sample. If they like it and they want to work with you, you'll negotiate with them, and then you'll negotiate um, one of two things. You'll either negotiate payment up front, uh, which most starting out authors will not go for. Um, you know, they would rather... Do the second option. The second option is royalties. So the royalties basically, when the audiobook gets bought, uh, it's split three ways. It's split with the website, uh, which is how they pay for the website and how they keep it up. Um, otherwise, you'd have to pay a membership. 
uh, and then uh, 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 another third goes to the author, and then an- another third, not even third, but another third goes to the voice actor. Um, and depending on how much the, you know, the number of copies sold, um, you know, and how much it's going for depends on how much you would make in total. Now, if you're starting out and you're not depending on the money immediately, you could, you know, and you read the book and it is, it sounds like something you would enjoy. I mean, I mean that by that is something you would enjoy to read. If it sounds like an absolute nightmare, you're like, I would never read this in a million years. Don't audition. Don't waste your time. Um, my suggestion is, uh, if you read the synopsis and it sounds like, you know, it'd be a lot of fun and you read a section of it and it sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. I would ask, if I was you, I would ask friends and family who are big readers or people that like this particular genre, ask them their opinion. If it sounds like something they would buy or they would read, I would suggest maybe auditioning for that. Um, now, uh, if you have a day job and you don't need the money, go with the royalties. Um, if it's a good book, don't, if it's a bad book, you want money up front. Um, if it looks like it's going to be a nightmare money up front, um, you know, but if it looks like it's going to be a really good book, you could probably go with royalties and make a little bit of something as time went on. Now, a lot of the money that you could make off the audiobook is also going to depend on the quality of your read. It doesn't just depend on the words on the paper. Even if it's a subpar book, your performance at the mic reading this book could actually make you more money than the, the book would normally have made money. Um, and what I mean by that is, is you give it a really creative flair or you, you, you know, you're really good at doing the character voices when it comes to each individual character and giving an emotional read and you're, you're performing more than just reading the book. You could make more money that way. Now, I don't put this high in my recommendations because I don't have a lot of experience with that and I don't think it's fair for me to recommend to other voice actors a source of income because I I have nothing to show for it. Um, But I do know some people who enjoy doing that kind of work, have made a good living doing that kind of work, and people that have basically, they started out doing that and then stopped, but are still collecting the money, uh, the royalty checks from basically Amazon every so many months. And so it is a way of kind of padding out your, um, your income, if you will, uh, over time, you know, you could, when, when you're, you know, you have some downtime and you're not, um, you know, marketing yourself and you're not doing auditions and you don't have other client work to do, you could go find an audio book, um, that you think would be good. That wouldn't take you very time, uh, very long to record and edit and finish and then publish, um, just to kind of pad out, um, your income over time. It would be a lot of work all, all at once for, uh, you know, more money evenly spread out over time. Again, depending on the quality of the book and depending on the quality of your read. Um, the books that I did, I went for ones that were shorter. Um, uh, I think there was one that was like short stories. There was, it was all about, you know, individual tiny stories that um, would be easier for me to read because I could do them in sections and it was me- easier for me to follow along instead of reading one whole book. Again, I'm dyslexic and it's horrible. Um, but I don't feel like I did. This was early on, so I really don't think I did a gr- good job. Uh, also, I wasn't working with this setup or this environment, so I'm not surprised that I didn't make that much. I think if I was to go and try it now, I would probably do a better job and probably could add to what I make. But right now, I don't have the time to just sit down and do an audiobook um, because it takes me forever to read. Uh, when I was a kid, it took me, probably because I was bored all the time, um, to do three pages took me 30 minutes. Yeah, standard size three to 500 page novel. So yeah, it took me a while. 
Not a fan. Um, but for people that are starting out that do have that day job that does give them flexibility um, and where they don't need to, you know, make some money now, uh, like they got, you know, if, if you got basically fired and you and you already started voiceover and you need a platform to really start making money, there are better ones than this. Uh, this is just one of the ways that you could, and it's free, and it's relatively not that difficult for some people. So anyway, uh, that was just kind of my overall opinion of audiobooks. There's pros and cons, like there is everything else. There's pros and cons on Fiverr. There's pros and cons with agents and managers. There's pros and cons with... Um, working with the Screen Actors Guild. There's pros and cons with Voices.com. There's pros and cons everywhere. Um, so just because there's pros and cons doesn't make it bad and doesn't make it impossible. Um, it just means you just need to be aware and you just need to work with it. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. Definitely leave a comment down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. I mean, that one's obvious. Uh, hit the notification bell so you can get uh, notified whenever I'm doing another video or any live streams. Don't know if that's going to be a regular thing. Uh, subscribe, um, and the link to that website will be in the description, as follow as as well as my social media. And yeah, until next time, peace.